So, and that's so exactly, yeah. So when you when you when you're in the military and you become a CIA agent, <laughs> you know, there are a lot of guys that are just patriots who become who want to work for the intelligence agencies. Where are these meetings where they're? I mean, this is this is uh, the 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 thing is that you have what do you have a group of people that sit around and say we want this and we're going to implement this. I mean, it's a huge organization. And like you right. said, there were 16 different intelligence operations. Right. I don't understand how you'd get everybody on the same page. Cause if you were talking to me that way, I'd go, I'd go, what the fuck are we talking about here? Are you talking about- Brian, but like, you like, wouldn't be uh, brought into that meeting. There are a lot of CIA guys, CIA guys who would disagree with this. So it's how in the world is this happening? So, where, right, so look, look, yeah. I know that you, right. So everybody knows about Iran-Contra, right? And yeah. this is a this is a window into how one black op would was being used to fund black operations around the world, right? So that money was going to the BCCI, right, the uh, the, the fake cutout CIA bank to then fund to uh, operations like Al Qaeda at the time, right? So they were funding right, well, the Mujahideen, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they were funding Mujahideen through BCCI, which was connected to Iran Contra. And by the way, we have people from those entities, the Team A, Team B. <clears throat> that's the that touches on what you're getting at, to where the people that are in doing the Team Team A or Team B stuff don't know what the other one's doing, right? So if you're involved in Black Ops, that stuff's very compartmentalized. Um, and there's Barry, Barry Seal. Think about the uh, Barry and the Boys, a great book by Daniel Hopsicker about how. That operation was run with bringing the drugs into, you know, Arkansas and, and other other airports in the U.S. Um, Fletcher Prouty, right, famously wrote uh, the secret team because he was one of the secret team, and he talks about all the things that they would go, the, the operations they were doing in all these other countries. So it's a compartmentalized uh, organization and entity. Um, I've interviewed people from MI6 and MI5. I've interviewed people from, as, as I said, the Pentagon Black Ops. And they will talk about how compartmentalized it is, right? People in the right. Uh, so there's yeah. there's sort of a CIA within the CIA and a deep state within yeah, the deep state. Absolutely. Yeah. How do you get into that deep state? You've got to toe the line. Or you've got to be ideologically aligned with those people. So I think that um, if you're talking about somebody at the level of a Brzezinski, that's above CIA, right? Uh, the foundations, the think tanks, these kinds of people are the brains and they're the ones that are kind of above people doing operations. So people in the field, that's not that big of a deal, right? That's more like a, running a business if you're in the field because you got people underneath you, you got to you know ma manipulate them and get them to do this and that. Um, that might pr produce some interesting, sexy stories, but that's not the high-level policy making. So if you're a Brzezinski, you need to be at a high-level university. He was recruited out of McGill. I think he was teaching at McGill. Yeah, wasn't he was a Polish national, though, right? He'd grown up in Poland and then, right. Yeah, and he um, came I, and his family he left. Was, was he Nixon's, wasn't he Nixon's uh, national security advisor or was he Carter's? Carter's. I can't remember. Carter's, right. Um, he, smart guy. You um, got to be at a night. You got to be at the right school. You got to have a, a decent family yes. background, and you got to be recruited, right? I think so. It, there's the book that we got. This is what got him recruited by Rockefeller was when he wrote this book, and David said he. David literally he called up Kissinger. Uh, Henry, I've got a guy I want to occupy a new position. <laughs> literally, and Kissinger said yes, yes, Mr. Rockefeller, we will give the big new a nice position in the Trilateral Commission. <laughs> yeah, so that's literally what happened. Well, well, dude, I mean, what, it wasn't it, wasn't it, uh, I think the architects of the Iraq War, if you look at a lot of them, they came out of the University of Chicago and their, their teacher was Leo Strauss. I mean, all of them, and Leo Strauss was a guy who believed, he was a Talmudic scholar who, mm -hmm. who and, and an academic and, and a powerful intellect who said that, that democracy is a human right and 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 it trumps sovereignty of a country and he had a philosophy that people like i think paul wolfowitz i think maybe douglas feith i, I uh, certainly uh, richard pearl william crystal a lot of these guys i maybe even condoleezza rice but a lot of these people if you look they all came from the same school of thought which was university of chicago leo strauss or at least were influenced by this one thinker which the idea was they had the hubris to believe they could restructure the middle east based on sort of these these ideas without having any knowledge really of Arabic culture, Iraqi history, right. uh, tribal history. I mean, they had no, they, they, this was where, where Bush was such a, Bush W's wisdom was so lacking. And, and it, it, you know, it, and here he we a, are. He was a puppet, dude. Well, here we are, he was, but here we are, you know, how many years later, uh, you know, and how is Iraq doing? Maybe better, maybe, but the point is, is that, how many people were lost as a result of this it was grand a genocide, experiment? Dude. And how, by the way, how but much Brian, how much Brian. money was spent? So, so may, maybe maybe that's an example of what you're talking about, where you get a you get a sort of bubble of thought 
you get a you get an echo chamber, and that echo chamber gets influence and pushes policy. Is that, and, is that and Brian? So you know who, fa who founded the University of Chicago? I'm sorry. Who founded the University of Chicago? I don't know. The Rockefellers. <laughs> it's, oh. it's their school. So you bring a lot of this back to Rockefeller. I mean, I bring it back to just ideas and people who get seduced by ideas when they're young. Well, you said money, right? So you said it's a lot of it's about money. Well, the people behind those ideas, ideas are trafficked as well, like money. So yeah. money promotes ideas like the Rockefellers putting millions of dollars in a university of Chicago to promote third wave feminism. So ideas are also a kind of a currency and kind of a, a, a tool or a weapon is, is how I see it. Well, they're also really seductive and take on a, a life of their own, though, right? I mean, the feminism and, and these things that, that make sense to a degree, you know, they, there's a lot of good in a lot of these ideas, and, they, and then they get hijacked by people who use them as tools to further their own powerful agenda, right? Yeah, but again, we can also see the very people who fund these things write tons and tons of books saying why they're funding it and what they're yes. Yes. Okay. I want to get into something real quick. We t I brought this up earlier, but you know, you know, Brian Callen is a, a very successful actor. He's done a lot of amazing stuff and I'm super proud to be his friend. I Thank love you. him very much. Thank you so much. And he's done a great job and he's super talented without a doubt. So Brian's been to very level, very high levels of this whole thing, and he's done a wonderful job. And I don't think people realize what a wonderful person Brian Callum really is. Like sometimes he gets shit because he's super liberal, but he's that guy. I'm That's not liberal. really I'm not liberal. No, but you're you're you like dude. When we have the trans person on, you you basically suck their dick. Yeah, which is fine. I love people, but but you I love are. you're a good. But he's I'm a, a I'm good a person at heart. Capitalist, and I'm an. That's what people don't understand about him. He's like a really great person at heart. So sometimes. I don't know if that gets in his way of understanding sometimes that there is darkness out there. Not that he's naive, but that like maybe his kindness blinds him to seeing what's I, going on. I believe so, that. I can, I'll own that. I think you're right. I think that okay. I tend to be always surprised at. I mean, I, I'll, I'll be honest. So, so this is a this is a, a mea culpa. Uh, tw uh, twenty years ago, twenty one years ago, I actually thought, I really did think that the neocons like had had the world's best interests in mind and that that invading iraq was just it was a was a credible debate because we were trying to make the world safe and i didn't really think that there was any that money or any of that played a factor i didn't i was very naive about that yeah he and listen so brings to me to this like at the like hollywood is so it was i think it's losing its power right now but it was so powerful and the the no even like if you want to look at that, like elections the notion that these very powerful people would just let the masses decide and they're like I hope our guy gets elected if he doesn't we're gonna have to wait another four years like they wouldn't play both sides and position people both sides so if we take that that philosophy of politics and we look at at Hollywood these people at the highest levels like you don't get there unless there's a game that gets played right and it's just like when you look at these pop divas like how many you know i remember going to an open mic here a, a musical open mic seeing the most amazing beautiful entertainers that no one ever heard of this was 20 years ago like what the game that gets played to get to those sections, whether it's the Disney's Mickey Mouse Club and what goes on with there, and then this this initiation that takes to get to the highest levels. Now, does everybody have to go through that? I don't know. Is Denzel Washington go through that? Doesn't seem like he plays that game, but I don't know. But there seems to be an initiation that goes along with getting to certain levels. Like, uh, you know, Kate, uh, what's her name? The famous singer with the big chi chis Like, I'm having a... Katy Perry? Katy Perry, right? I mean, like, there's so much symbolism in everything she does that it's like... This is where Sam gets so crazy. 